In this class, I would like to show you some examples of how databases are used in websites. I first would like to point out a typical static file. Whenever you see a file name with an extension .htm or .html, that is a static web page, meaning that the code written does not change. Even though there may be some interactivity, as we see here, this is accomplished using JavaScript. So we have JavaScript, CSS, and HTML as our client-sided or static languages. This website is created using Squarespace. Any online web creation software, such as Wix, Squarespace and WordPress use templates to generate the content. Because the user is providing the content via an interface, they are not actually creating any files. Therefore, all of the content is being stored in a back-end database. You generally will not see any file names in these types of sites. Many times, file names are not shown for security reasons also. When I search for something in Google, it is sending that search term to some type of data source and returning a result page. That result page is based on a template, and the content is coming from a data source. Forms are commonly used in searching and you will typically see the question mark indicating a query string being sent to a data source. All of the products and content in Amazon are stored in a database or some kind of data source. Again, when the user searches for something, the content is displayed in a template you will see the question mark and the query after that. Most retail stores also use databases to store the products and then display them when the user requests to see a specific product or product category. So databases are used all over the web. However, they also need a server language to work with them. In this class, we will be learning to use PHP to work with our database. 